What's up everybody? This is Ian, your seasonal tech reviewer. At dahil release ng ROG Ally, so gawa na natin ng review yan para naman makatulong tayo sa mga kababayan nating gusto bumili. 44,000 pesos lang naman kasi ito eh, so it's not cheap at all. So, sulit ba siya? So, ano ba tong si ROG Ally? Well, it's a Windows-based handheld gaming system na merong 512GB of storage, meron din siyang 120Hz, fast refresh rate na screen, and meron siyang custom APU na AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme. This runs on Windows, so napakaraming games na pwede mong laruin dito like your Steam library or yung mga free games na kiniklaim mo sa Epic Games or sa, sa, sa GOG or... Pwede rin sa Microsoft PC Game Pass, pwede rin Blizzard Games, or Call of Duty, you name it, emulators, pwede ka rin mag uh, remote play on your PlayStation 5. So in terms of game compatibility, wala ka magiging problema dito. This comes in two variants, merong Standard Edition at merong Extreme Edition, and the only difference is yung APU nila. The Standard Edition will cost you 39,000 pesos and will be released this month, August 2023, while the Extreme Edition is already available and will cost you 44,000 pesos SRP. And if you're interested in buying any of those consoles, I'll be adding affiliate links down in the description box below sa official ROG you know, Shopee store or Lazada store at sa iba pang store na pwede nyo pagbilhan. The best thing about it is meron nitong 2 years warranty dito sa atin sa PH. So ito na, umpisahan na natin. The build quality, I wasn't really expecting a lot kasi alam mo halos kapresyo lang siya ng 512GB model ng Steam Deck plus napakarami yung upgrades in terms of screen and the APU, etc. It is surprisingly good. I like it dahil it feels premium in your hands. The plastic mold they used here feels really good once nahawakan mo siya. Hindi siya yung alam yung tipong hollow yung feeling sa loob. Plus they have added grip textures at alam mo hindi lang siya design and it actually makes a difference. Average lang din yung seams kasi alam mo yun, feel mo pa rin siya and I'll talk more about it later. Also dahil white siya so ma-highlight talaga yung mga dumi, mga himulmol, mga libag. <laughs> whatever so yun button layouts are the same with the xbox controller the face button is on the larger side for me for a handheld device actually ka size lang siya ng typical controller mo like your ps5 or xbox my problem here is compared to other controllers or other handheld device na pa curve dito this one it's flat so it doesn't feel natural parang 2 days vibes lang yung dating if you know what I mean. D-pad again is Xbox style, pero lesser yung tactile feedback. And it's quite usable naman, especially if mga modern games ang lalaroin mo. Kasi mostly, the D-pad is used for, alam mo yun, inventory or changing weapons or accessing your map. Pero kung retro gaming or maybe fighting games and on the competitive side ka, uh, maybe it's not the best. Um, I'm not really the best person to talk about it kasi hindi naman ako pro gamer or retro gamer. So, take that with a grain of salt. Shoulder buttons are raised or nakaangat siya sa housing. I don't know why they use shiny buttons here pero ayun may texture siya for added grip. Sa lahat ng controllers and handheld consoles na nagamit ko, this analog cap here is by far the best. Actually, hindi mo nakakailangan ng analog caps dito kasi sobrang grippy and tacky niya. Kaya lang the sticks have, you know, lesser resistance which translates into a lower quality feel. Pero naman as you use it, it'll grow on you like myself. Actually, hindi ko na siya napapansin lately. Uh, the back buttons, ito yung parang G button doon sa Logitech mouse or keyboards nyo. It'll give uh, secondary functions to any of your buttons. So it is quite useful on certain game genres. 608 grams lang siya. It has solid build quality. It's a tinier console than the Steam Deck. Pero how's the ergonomics of this device? First is napakalayo ng right analog to your face button. So ang mangyari, alam yun, extra effort kapag if you're gonna switch from your analog to your face button. Hindi siya katulad ng ibang controller na naka-angle siya. So napakadali lang i-switch as you notice here so kadalasan with your controllers and with Steam Deck ito itong part ng thumb mo ang ginagamit mo and also it's more accurate to use lalo na sa mga first person shooters with the ROG Ally dahil straight yung orientation ng kamay mo ang tendency ang natural tendency na gagawin ng thumb mo is ito this part yung gagamitin mo ayan and with doing combo sagabal din siya kasi nga Again, with the orientation ng paghawak mo. So, 
Alam mo yun. Uh, adjust pa yung gamay mo. And also, this is just basing on my experience and alam mo yun. For a guy, <laughs> may kaliitan din yung kamay ko. Ayan no. <laughs> so, there. There are two ways din pala on handling the ROG Ally. This one is the most natural way. Kaya lang the problem is this effing corner here will start digging sa kamay mo. Palas, yung binanggit ko kanina ng seam, which is not that good. Alam mo yun, kakalkalin niya talaga yung kamay mo and will, you know, add discomfort while you play. For, for me, this is the best way to hold the ROG Ally. Alam mo yung lower part ng thumb mo, ayun no, yung parang drumstick. That would rest on this part of the ROG Ally. It just needs getting used to and at least you won't feel any discomfort dun sa kamay mo while you're playing. So, ayun, ergo is not really the best aspect of this device, pero if you wanted to try it yourself, uh, alam nyo, napakaraming Asus store around the Philippines para makapag-try ka, meron silang mga demo units dun. Alright, screen. So, gawin natin uling ala phone review. So, it's a 7-inch touchscreen, full HD with 120Hz refresh rate. Meron din siyang a 7ms na response time, 500 nits ang brightness, full sRGB, and meron din itong free sync. It is a beautiful display. I mean, when you're swapping or when you're navigating sa Windows GUI, actually, mafe-feel mo na napaka-smooth niya, buttery smooth. Mainly because of the 120Hz refresh rate. You know, it adds more value talaga. You know, it really feels premium. Color reproduction din is excellent. Actually, hindi mo na siya kailang i-tweak ang saturation level. Alam yan. And also, fingerprint magnet din pala yung screen nito. And there's a very noticeable color shifting when you tilt the, the device. Not really a biggie kasi head-on ka naman pag maglalaro ka on the ROG Ally. So, there. Red Dead Redemption plays really well here. Imagine this is running 1080p at around medium settings. I'm getting around 45 FPS and yeah, it is really smooth. I haven't played this na ganito ka smooth yung graphics on the handheld. Uh, Cyberpunk, nilaro ko siya at uh, medium settings at full HD and ayun, performance mode. And yeah, gulat ako eh. <laughs> Ganda ng graphics. Akala mo, actually akala mo PS5 siya. On the smaller screen, you know, with that higher graphic setting will give you, alam yun, more details like part particle effects plus napakaganda pa ng color reproduction ng screen. And also, when you pan your screen from your like left to right, like pansin mo talaga na hindi nag struggle yung APU. Frames are at around 30 FPS, pero this 30 FPS is a lot smoother than I've experienced before kasi ayun na, mas malakas yung APU niya. Z1 Extreme, plus meron din siya free sync, so it'll definitely eliminate screen tearing and stuttering. In all honesty talaga, it's a totally different experience. Hogwarts Legacy, well, man, another win for the ROG Ally. I mean, malakas talaga yung APU eh. I run this on the lowest setting, lowest graphic setting, pero at 1080p. You'll be getting around 45 to around 60 FPS. Though you encounter some hiccups, Kahit naman kasi sa PC, it, it'll also happen. Lalo na pag nandun ka sa loob ng Hogwarts Castle. Kaya it's very important to run the, the, the shader cache first before you start the game by you know setting the GPU's uh, RAM to auto doon sa Armory Crate. Kasi pag naka 4 gig siya or 8 gig or whatever, it'll just start right away. So hindi magana yung shader cache niya. Again, mafe-feel mo yung level up in performance, mafe-feel mo yung binayaran mo with you know, these games that you're playing. So game streaming or remote play, I've played Diablo 4 sa Steam Deck for countless hours. Pansin ka talaga is sumasakit yung mata ko. Kahit. And I, I even thought maybe if there's just a bigger screen, it might fix it. Pero when I switched to the ROG Ally, yeah, night and day difference talaga, man. Compared to Steam Deck, like, you're really gonna squint if you wanna see more details, but the full HD resolution really wins. Emulation with this APU, man, you can play probably all of the games, well, except for PS4. I mean, napakalakas niya. You can play a whole lot of retro games, like from the old ones to like Nintendo 64, PS1, PS2, lalo na PS3, lahat ng Nintendo consoles, mapalalaro mo rin. I've tried the Switch games. Uh, sa PS3, I've tried Fight Night, and yeah, it, it really feels good, man. Alam niya, finally, makakapaglaro ka ng almost all uh, titles sa PlayStation 3 library. With the Nintendo Switch, 
uh, Breath of the Wild runs a solid 30 FPS on performance mode pag nakaplug ka. If, if you're using the battery, it'll play at around 27 to 28 to 30. Overall, it's quite enjoyable. Super Mario Odyssey runs really smooth at 60 at performance mode, kahit naka battery mode ka lang. It's really good, man. Battery, so here's what I've observed. So if you're gonna play your AAA games at a performance mode, expect to get around 1 hour and 30 minutes. However, if you switch to turbo mode, bababa yun to 1 hour. Diyan lang actually nagre-range yung battery life niya sa mga games na nalaro ko. Alam mo, halos pare-parehas lang sila. So paano kung lalabas kayo ng bahay? So medyo bitin naman yung 1 hour of game time, di ba? Well, there's a lot of way around this. Pwede ka muna maglaro ng mga low demanding games or you can also set graphic settings to the lowest or you can set the resolution to, you know, 720p or you can also set the screen refresh rate to 60 hertz. You can also set it to silent mode. Also for low demanding games, pwede kang gumawa ng manual uh, profile sa Armory Crate. You can just set it to 7 watts sa lahat and you can squeeze around 4 hours of game time actually tried with the remote play was able to last for like three hours on silent mode kung hindi ka pa rin talaga masatisfy and you really wanted to play your triple a games while on the go then kailangan mo na talaga ng power bank i'll be testing the power banks that i've used with my steam deck here so tingnan natin kung ano magiging performance na and i'll be sharing the results on you know my future uploads so make sure that you're subscribed Speakers, these are excellent for a handheld device kasi alam naman yung mga manufacturers of gaming devices wala silang pakialam sa speakers like alam yun, masabi lang na yes, merong speaker yung uh, gaming system namin You'll actually hear bass dito sa ROG Ally The speakers are sitting right in front of you You'll get decent separation and both volume and over presentation ng sound is really good. Plus, meron din siyang Dolby Atmos for your front speakers. Level up siya, man. Kahit na maglaro kay, just using the speakers. Desktop mode, so you can either use a compatible Type-C cable, so direct na yun from your uh, ROG Ally to your monitor, or pwede rin gumamit ka ng dock, use the DisplayPort, HDMI. Actually, gamit ko dito is yung uh, Lumang dock ko from JSOC. For my Steam Deck, madali lang naman talaga siya. Medyo natagalan lang ako kasi may monitor supports uh, 144Hz na refresh rate. And kailangan ko palang mag-create ng custom resolution under that AMD app. And kailangan ko ring disable yung feature na to para ma-activate siya. So, there. Unfortunately, si FreeSync will only work if you're using Type-C or uh, DisplayPort going to your monitor or kung meron ka nung napakamahal na XG Mobile. And ayun, so kahit na official ROG dock yung gamit mo, unfortunately, hindi pa rin mag-work si FreeSync. And as soon as you set it up though, man, oh my gosh, akala mo talaga may sarili kang desktop computer running on Windows and you know, imagine mo mas malakas pa yung CPU nito kaysa sa CPU ng uh, gaming desktop ko which is running, this is like a Ryzen 5600X. Mas malakas pa siya doon. So, not bad na rin talaga. Plus, yung GPU na nasa ROG Ally is meron siyang equivalent to maybe around 1650 to 2050 or 1060. So, doon siya naglalaro. So, not bad na rin for a desktop computer. And when I compare the benchmark, mas mabilis ng 20% itong ROG Ally compared sa aking uh, desktop PC. Cons mo lang dito versus a full fully pledged desktop computer is yung storage options mo and yung upgradeability ng CPU, ng GPU. Ayun, limited ka lang talaga sa ports sa dock na mapipili mo. Ease of use, so ganito gawin natin. So, sa gaming world, meron dalawang klaseng gamers. Merong console gamer and meron ding PC Master Race Gamer. If PC Gamer ka, for sure you will not struggle here kasi alam yung home court mo to eh. Hindi siya katulad ng Steam Deck na alam yung kahit napaka-teke mo. If you wanted to, alam mo yun, make other things work, napaka-hirap. Sobrang daming research ang gagawin mo. Kung console gamer ka naman and never ka pa naka-experience ng Windows operating system, then medyo baka mahirapan ka dito. So, ease of use would solely depend on your proficiency with the Windows operating system. Personally, I'm quite comfortable here with the ROG Ally. Like, you know, imagine at some point in my career, I actually worked with Microsoft. So, 
alam mo yun, nagamit ko talaga yung mga experience ko doon. So, bawas na rin talaga siya sa mga iisipin mo. So, what are the cons of buying the ROG Ally? So, it has this micro SD card slot issue. Kasi ba naman, ano talaga sa vents, naka-locate yung uh, micro SD slot and marami. Malapit din siya sa power delivery. Ini talaga lahat papunta doon. It does not happen to all. There's definitely a number I haven't read or seen anyone na nangyari to dito sa Philippines pero in the US kasi more than one month ng release sa kanila meron napakaraming issues with the micro SD slot it's not just the micro SD card na nagiging defective the actual slot itself as well so the best move here really is to just upgrade your internal storage from like 1 terabyte or 2 terabytes alam mo wag ka muna mag-invest into a huge uh, capacity na micro SD card Asus have acknowledged these issues. They have released update also that made the fan curve more aggressive to combat that hearing issue. So I think na natin kung ano yung mga next steps nila dito. And if you wanted to buy SSDs, I'll be adding links again, affiliate links dun sa description box below. Another con is it's running Windows. It has a ton of convenience, etc. Compatibility, pero at the same time, it'll also come with it's you know drawback because it's a windows machine it will also comes with windows issues like nangyari sa akin when i plugged my headphone unfortunately left channeling nagwo work so kailangan ko pang hanapin yung setting for the ba- for the balance para magwork yung both uh, channels so kung bagong windows users lang baka talaga ma-frustrate kayo dito possibly dapat talaga naka default na yun pero ganun talaga ang windows may mga ganyang issues may times then that you know when you're playing and you open armory crate pagbalik mo naka window mode na yung game na nilalaro mo or pag pina-sleep mo yung ROG Ally pagbalik mo naka-close na yung game mo. Hindi siya katulad ni Steam Deck or cellphone na pag ini-sleep mode mo and when you wake it up and pa rin yung game mo. So re- remember this is a Windows machine. My RGB lighting din siya sa analog and no no no. I just turned those off. What sucks is alam mo yung pag naka-sleep mode siya and it's on your bedside randomly mag-on or mag-engage yung dalawang RGB which is quite distracting alam mo yun. <laughs> shouldn't be doing that. Hopefully they fix that on future updates as well. A recommendation kung wala ka pa PC or gaming console and you're looking into buying an entry level desktop computer plus gusto mo din ng handheld gaming device man perfect to sa'yo bilhin ka na lang ng monitor keyboard mouse at saka dock Alam mo yun, meron ka ng ROG Ally, meron ka pang gaming PC. So, alam mo, pwede mo siyang gamitin sa work or sa school. Pwede mo gamitin pang browse or pang research or pang Facebook. Doon ko talaga na-feel yung value ng 44,000 pesos. Kung meron ka ng gaming PC or may ne- next-gen console ka na like PS5 or Xbox Series X, uh, alam mo, it's kind of hard to recommend kasi you already have a better console like 4K gaming ka na sa PS5 or alam mo yun, uh, next-gen graphics ka na or PC masteries ka na. It's kind of hard to recommend a handheld na alam mo yun, 1 hour or 1 and a half hours mo lang malalaro. 44,000 pesos pa siya. Kung Steam Deck yan, medyo makataro ka pa eh. Around 24,000, 20,000 yung mga second-hand ngayon as a supplementary console. So, sinasabi mo na pangat siya. Actually, no. In fact, it's the best and most powerful handheld console right now. It's also below the selling price of most Windows-based gaming system. And I'm really having a blast playing on this thing. Alam mo yun, ramdam mo yung upgrade from, you know, like an 800p screen to a 1080p screen at napakalakas pa ng APU niya. So playing Cyberpunk, Diablo 4, you know, Harry Potter, other AAA games for sure mag work din dito. And what if naka Steam Deck na ako, sulit ba ang upgrade with ROG Ally? Well, if you want me to dissect more with that subject, abangan mo ang aking next video, Steam Deck versus ROG Ally. Okay, finally, closing thoughts. I can say that this is the best Handheld gaming console right now, it has fast refresh rate screen, it has the best APU, it is definitely cheaper than other Windows based console, meron pa siyang 2 years local uh, warranty dito sa Philippines. Ano lang talaga, ergonomics lang talaga yung compromise dito kasi they really wanted to make a smaller device. Yun talaga kasi ang gusto ni Asus eh. 
And again, if you wanted to buy this console, make sure that you're a fan of handheld devices. Like myself, I really had a blast playing with my Game Boy, with my Game Boy Advance, PSP, Vita, 3DS, Nintendo Switch, kahit pa nga yung Nokia Engage. So, ayun, nahuli na yung edad. So it's really within my DNA to appreciate the charm of these handheld devices. Kung nadadala ka lang sa hype, alam niyo, because it's the new thing, I need to have all of the latest thing. Alam niyo, pag-isipan mo muna, maybe start off first with a Switch, Switch Lite, or daming retro consoles dyan. I-feel mo muna, kasi alam niyo, malalaman mo naman yun eh, kung para sa'yo talaga siya. Don't jump and buy it muna, kasi it's 44,000 pesos man, it's so expensive. In fact, with that price, you can buy a PS5, you can buy... A Switch Lite or probably a Steam Deck. Alam mo yun. <laughs> Magsasawa ka pa sa sobrang dami ng games. And again, tandaan mo that this is also running Windows. So ayun, hopefully I was helpful with this video sa aking pagbabalik YouTube. And if you have questions or alam mo yun, nagugulang pa rin kayo, just comment down below and for sure I'll be responding to those. And again, this is Ian. Oh my gosh. I'll be seeing you on the next video. I don't know why they use shiny buttons here. I don't know why they use. I don't know why they. I don't know why they. I don't know why they shoot. What the crap? I don't know why they. I don't know why they use shiny buttons here. Pero ayon may texture shaffer added grip.